Welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. I'm Corey Ashton and I'm excited to walk you through eight tips on how to manipulate your WordPress navigation or menu. You can do some customization, you can find out some cool SEO tips. Stay tuned. For our very first tip that we want to share with you, we want to talk about how to assign your primary navigation or your primary menu bar, typically across the top or maybe down the left side of your website. Uh, the way to do that is actually inside, I'll switch this over here, inside your dashboard you're going to go to appearance and go to menus. And this should be the area that you'll have all the different menus created that either maybe you've already created or perhaps the author himself or herself have, have placed in here for you. What you want to do though is assign a certain menu to be that primary uh, menu. If you don't do this, very typically what happens is an author will either put all of your pages across here, a really huge stretch out, every single page you've ever created is sitting up there, or this particular author says add a menu. He's literally telling me, hello, go assign a menu to sit here. So you have to come to the menus area, and again, like I mentioned in the blog article, this might be different depending upon your theme. Every author codes a little differently, but this is how this particular theme allows it to be set. So theme locations, primary menu, this is my main menu. These are the only options that I want up there in that top part. I'm going to click Save Menu. Once that change is saved, I can come back here to the front side of my website. I can click Refresh. And now those two mini options should be sitting up here on the right side. Now the second tip I want to walk you through is how to create a drop down. For those of us that used to uh, code the old school way, we know that this has been mind blowing amazing how easy WordPress has made it to create a drop down. Very first step though is you have to go create the page that you want to be adding to this menu. So be sure that your page is already made. Once it is, you can click here, view all, and every single page you've ever created will be listed here. You'll scroll down through them alphabetically. Home. By default is always the top though. Let's say I want to add these two pages here uh, to my menu. I'm just going to click add menu. By default it puts up at the bottom of your menu so you kind of have to drag and drop these in the order that you want them to be in. So I'm just going to slide it ever so slightly off to the right and you're going to see that it causes that little indent to happen. That immediately creates them as a sub menu item. Clicking save menu should in fact as long as your author has coded this and given you the ability to have drop down options. Once I go to the front side of my website now I will have this really cool drop down feature here uh, and you'll have the, uh, the little arrow appear here to the right side and see now I have two new pages that have just automatically been created. Pretty cool. The third tip I want to walk you through is actually how to add links to your menu. So maybe you have um, something else that you want to add up there to that navigation bar that doesn't actually sit on your website. For me, for instance, I like to add our YouTube channel so that people can quickly and easily visit that. So I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to come over here to menus and right here in this section to the left is an area called links. I'm going to open that up. I can paste that URL in there and I can give it a name. YouTube videos and click add to menu. That'll again by default it puts it at the bottom of your menu list right and then you have to drag it and drop it in whatever you whatever order you want it to appear in. So as my computer's thinking about it. There it is. All right, so here's my YouTube video. Again, I can drag and drop it in whatever order I want it to be in. Clicking Save Menu, I can go back here to the front side of my website and click Refresh, and let's see what order we put that in. It should be in the third. Let's see, click Refresh, and now we've got Home, Ask Questions, we should have YouTube videos, perfect, and then more how-to WordPress videos. So now when I click on that, it should take me over to my YouTube channel. The fourth tip I want to show you is maybe I don't want that to take them away from my website. Maybe I want that to open up in a new window, right? So here's how you do that. Pretty simple. We come here and we click on this little arrow and right here is this little open link in new window or tab, this little box. If that is not present, if you open up this little arrow right here and you see that that is not, that little box is not available, come up here to the top of your page and click on screen options. Open up this drawer and be sure that this little area right here, this link target, is checked. If that's not checked, it's not going to be visible. If it is, it should show up for you. You should be able to check it and save menu. When you go back to the front side of your website, you should be able to click refresh and then click on that YouTube videos and now, as you can see, it opens up in a separate tab. Alright, now, 
This tip is all about search engine optimization inside of your WordPress menu. Please do not abuse this little tip that I'm about to show you, but um, walk you through how to add a little bit of SEO. And this is a really cool tip because I think a lot of people miss this. Uh, let's say you've got this page here that says ask a question. And right here it says title attribute. You can actually put in there a little bit more of a description that will help um, Google understand what, or all search engines for that matter, understand what this link really is. And you can say something like ask a WordPress support question. And then just zip that right up there. Um, YouTube videos, we could say WordPress YouTube videos. Zip that up. Uh, more how-to WordPress videos. This one we could say WordPress tutorials videos. That just helps us add a, a few more maybe key terms or keywords that we think will help uh, Google better understand those specific links and click Save Menu. The reason why you want to do this is because typically, obviously, Google can read Ask a Question, but you really don't want lengthy descriptions up there for your end user. You don't want all of that listed up here, but you want Google to understand what that's really about. So adding this little bit of extra title attribute is really, really helpful. Okay, so on this particular tip, this is all about maybe you have a particular uh, drop down, and maybe the top, which is kind of the uh, column header or the column title, maybe you don't want that to be clickable. You just want the options inside the drop down to be clickable. How do you actually go about doing that? I'll show you right here. We're going to do links area, right? So we're going to open that up, and instead of typing in a long URL, because we don't want this to link anywhere, we're going to go ahead and just use a hashtag for right now, okay? Or pound sign. Uh, link text, right now I'm going to use something like featured articles. And I'm going to click add to menu. Okay, so again by default anything you add to your menu is going to drop down to the very very bottom of your uh, menu and you've got to then drag and drop that to whatever order you want that to be in. And I actually want to create it, I want to slide it up here and I want to create these two different um, articles as featured articles. So I'm going to throw them over here, indent them, so now that's a drop down. But I really don't want this to go anywhere. It's not a page, and I don't want it to be clickable. So what I want to do is actually remove that little pound sign now. You have to add it in there because uh, if you don't put a URL in this box, it won't let you add anything to the menu. So we just go ahead and throw in that little pound sign for now. And we can say, again, using that uh, extra SEO area, we'll say help uh, articles. All right, and I'm going to click Save Menu. And then we're going to go ahead and go on up uh, back to the front side of the website. We're going to click Refresh. And now we should see our restructured uh, menu area here. These are our drop downs. Dun, 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 dun. And this is not clickable at all. It shows that it has a, a pound sign behind it, but it's not clickable. It takes you nowhere. That's how you accomplish that. Tip number seven is creating multiple menus. And so this whole tutorial, I've basically been walking you through all these tips on one specific main menu. But what if you want a different menu maybe in your sidebar or in your footer area? If the author for your theme has allowed you to have widgetized boxes in those areas, you can create a custom menu and drop it in there. This is how it's done. So we're gonna come over to your appearance menus area, of course. And right here is a create a new menu option. We're gonna click that. Name it something that makes sense to you so you know uh, basically where, where you're going to assign it. Um, sometimes I call it like footer resources or footer quick menu. Or for this one, let's call it um, sidebar featured articles. All right, I'm going to click create menu. So now this is allowing me to have two different menus on my website, my main menu and my sidebar featured articles now that you can see here. So they have to be careful though, whenever you wanna come back in and make edits to these to be sure you're on the correct menu to make edits to them. But now I can add any of my selected content in there, create the uh, custom menu, let's say that I wanna add both of these articles to it, I'm gonna click add to menu. Now I've created it, I'm gonna click save menu, and I can go into the widget area and go basically assign them anywhere I wanted to. Again, if your author has allowed you to code in widget boxes, you can use this option right here called custom menu and drag that anywhere you want. 
uh, into your sidebar or into your footer area. So if we wanted it in our sidebar, we could grab it, drag it, and drop it up here just below our search. Uh, select which menu that you've just created. I'm going to do that and say Featured Articles and click Save. Coming back to the front side of the website, we're going to click Refresh. And now right here, just below, if I move this over here, just below our search is our two different featured articles that, that we just uh, put there. And that's how you create a custom menu. Well, let's say that you actually want to add uh, maybe posts or categories even to this area. Let me show you how that's done. We're going to go back over to Menus, so Appearance, Menus. And right here you have your pages and you have links. Um, but what if we want to add categories or certain posts to this particular uh, menu? If those options are not listed here, this is how you add them. You're going to go up here to the top is this screen options drawer. You're going to click on that little drawer and that'll zip open. Right here we can say show on screen. We want to add posts. We want to add categories. You can e even add tags if there are different uh, custom um, formats or different types, those might be listed across here. And we can easily just click Screen Options, zip that back up, and now check this out. Over here on the left side, we now have all the posts you've ever written listed out and your different categories that you've created. So if you wanted a specific, maybe we wanted user tips to be over here, we can click Add to Menu and drop that in. See right here, it says Category. So now whenever somebody clicks on that, it actually dynamically produces that category page and has all those different articles on it. This is a really cool tip and a really great way to help make your users experience amazing on your website. Alright, so now it's time to get a little bit more advanced and for those total beginners this might be a little intimidating but check it out. It's pretty cool what you can do. So a couple of videos back I showed you guys CSS tips for the beginner and in this particular blog article at the very bottom I have that link listed for you or on YouTube I've got that link listed for you uh, down below in the description area. So I really want to show you how maybe if you wanted to have one of your menu options be just kind of a standout or a call to action button across there and really kind of pop off the page. Sometimes you can do this for like requested quote options or for us particularly on WordPress Wednesdays it's this ask a button or ask a question button up here. I'd really like that to stand out a little bit more on the page. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my menus area and I want to move it. I, I want that to be kind of where the contact area would be inside of a regular website. So I want to slide it from being in that middle position to, over to um, the far right side. So we know how to do that. I'm just going to drag and drop it to the end because now it'll sit there across on the end. Clicking refresh. Now that ask a question is right here on this side. But I want that to really pop off the page and, and draw attention over here. So what I'd like to do is grab this orange color Okay, so now I know what that is, FF9022. Of course, I'm browsing with, I'm um, just writing that down really quickly. Of course, I'm browsing with Firefox. So I reference two different tools that I use with Firefox. I have this uh, Colorzilla right here and also this Firebug tool that I use a lot and we're about to use it right now. So if I want this Ask a Question to really stand off the page, I'm going to initiate my Firebug tool and I'm going to click on my little select element area and I'm going to come over here to this particular um, button. I'm going to click on it and what I'm looking for in all of this nerd code, don't, don't get intimidated, what we're looking for is the very specific number. You see how there are different numbers here for these menu items? This is the menu item I want to manipulate. So it says right here it's an ID menu item 141 and I'm going to copy that on my clipboard right now. So I'm going to X out of that screen. That particular CSS menu item um, element is what affects this ask a question option. So I'm going to go into my theme options area. For you guys, if you're using a child theme, this is where you'd go. You'd go into your child theme area, your CSS file inside that child theme, and you'd apply these changes there. For me, this particular author allowed us to have uh, a, a theme area, a custom CSS area. So I'm going to do a hashtag or a pound sign for the ID mark, right? And I'm going to paste in what I had copied there from my Firebug tool. Open the element, and close the element. And I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, background dash color. And I'm going to put in that color code that we captured, FF9022. And I'm going to end it there. And I'm going to click Save Options. Let's just go see what that does for us. So I'm going to click Refresh here. 
And let's see. Ah, look at that, man. That really pops off the page. Very cool. I dig that. Well, I don't really like the red, though, once I hover over it. That's really not standing out for me. Maybe I want it to be this more of a gray color whenever you roll over it. So I'm going to grab that gray color, and I'm going to go back to my little area here, my custom CSS box, or for you guys, again, it would be your child-themed CSS box. And I'm going to type that in again, menu item-141, open my element, close my element. And I'm actually going to stay on there. I'm going to say um, A for link, right, for active link. And I'm going to say on the hover mode, okay, when I hover over it, what do I want it to do? I want the color of the text to be that nice gray color. I'm going to click Save Options. So now when I click Refresh, it should look the same initially, right? It should still look, they'll have the white text on the orange box. But when I hover over it, now it's going to be a nice that dark gray with that nice orange. That really makes that stand out up there in that top navigation. That's a quick, simple way for you to add any sort of manipulation to menu items. I hope those tips helped you today. And if you have any other questions, be sure to check us out over on WPWED.com. I'll put the link right here. And also, you can check us out if you're here in San Antonio at our local meetup group. I'll put the link as well in the description area. Or Head over to WPWED.com and I've given you all sorts of really great resources and links inside of our blog article that correlates with this uh, video. Thanks so much. We want to send a shout out and thank you to Webtegrity for being our sponsor for this and we look forward to seeing you on the next WordPress Wednesday. All right, so I didn't have any really good outtakes today. They were kind of boring, they were lame, and then really I'm just getting good at this. So I thought maybe I would uh, plug a book that I've just read that I absolutely love, Still Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. And then he's also got an amazing follow-up book called Show Your Work. So let's get these in frame here. Both of these are just fantastic. They're short reads, uh, but really this particular one, Still Like an Artist, says 10 things nobody told you about being creative. And it's seriously just fantastic and inspiring. And this one is 10 Ways to Share Your Creativity and Get Discovered. So really great books. Pick them up over on Amazon or at uh, austincleon.com. You can check him out there. He's a local guy. He's out, well, he's out of Austin, so he's a Texas guy. So bonus points for that. Anyway, pick them up. Check them out. Catch you next time.